Hello, everybody, and welcome to Effective Communication. This is part of Access ASU's Junior Academy. I will be your presenter. My name is Kevin Johnson. I'm an executive coordinator here with Access ASU. Access ASU is a department within the university that is dedicated to increasing access to higher education and preparing Arizona students for success through family engagement, strategic K-12 education, and community partnerships. Right now, I ask that you grab a piece of paper and pencil and a phone for a timer as we have some activities planned for you today. So today, what we'll talk about are personal statements, professional email addresses, and FAFSA, which stands for Free Application for Federal Student Aid, Next Steps, and what you can do now as a junior. So for our first activity, it will be called, Who Will You Save? So imagine that you're on a cruise ship that is sinking and you only have one lifeboat that can fit eight people. The couples count as one person. I know the presentation says in teams, but by yourself, identify who will get a spot on the boat and why, and give yourself about five minutes to think about it, read the descriptions, and then we'll talk about it after. Feel free to pause the video right now. So although you only had eight people, counting the couples as one person to save, that would mean three would have to be left out. And you made your decisions, although they may have been tough, but you made your decisions based on what you felt was more important, right? So as you can read, just I'll read a couple to you. Number one, a doctor addicted to drugs and is very nervous, age 60. Number five, a man who sells washing machines, member of local volunteering club, age 51. Number eight, well-liked teacher, age 32. So as you read through these, you made some assumptions. And I'm sure that led, your that led to your decision on who to save and who not to save. So let's dig a little deeper into who these people actually are, not only based on what's been described to us. So let's look at number one, a doctor who is addicted to drugs and very nervous. The doctor was in a major life-threatening car accident over a year ago, and due to severe pain, he became addicted to pain medication. Let's look at number two, African-American male passenger weighing 350 pounds, Christian, age 27. This is actually the starting defensive lineman for the Arizona Cardinals and gives back to the community. Let's look at number three, a female recently released from juvenile detention no parents, age 16. This young lady lost both her parents within a month of one another due to cancer and a subse subsequent suicide. She is the oldest of three children and was incarcerated after stealing food to feed her younger brother and her sister. Let's look at number four, a Caucasian male charged with murder, one who can navigate the boat. Age 37, this man was charged with murder after helping his wife suffering from stage four bone cancer and her life. Number five, a man who sells washing machines, member of a local volunteering club. This man went to ASU to become a lawyer, but because of pressure from his father and grandfather while in college, he joined the family business selling washing machines to carry on the family legacy. Number six, a boy who has been paralyzed since birth, age 11. Despite being confined to a wheelchair, this young man started his own charitable organization for which he is a spokesperson and has raised over $3.5 million. Number seven, a Korean married couple, ages 56 and 60. They own their own Korean market in the neighborhood and employ local high school students and mentor them, encouraging them to pursue, to pursue a college education. It is stated in their will that if something should happen to them, they will close their business, thus leaving many neighborhood kids without possible jobs and encouragement. Number eight, a well-liked teacher, age 32. This is an avid teacher and lobbies for improvements in the quality of education for Arizona students and educators. Number nine, a Catholic nun who supervises an all-girls school, age 46. 
This is the last nun remaining in her particular order. Over 20 years ago, she founded an all-girls school for foster youth. Number 10, an unemployed student, age 21. This student is not able to work be because he is undocumented and has not been able to complete his DACA paperwork. And then let's look at number 11. Married couple, deeply in love, no children yet, ages 25 and 26. This couple is one of Hollywood's up and coming it couples. So after looking just at the brief descriptions, now you've been given more information about who these people are and gives you a different perspective when you're considering who you want to save and not. So with the new information, does that change who you would want to save and who wouldn't? Did you rearrange any particular couple or person? Did you add anybody or remove anybody off the list now given this new information? So just based on the surface, we might not be able to see the entirety of a person or their interests or anything like that before you get to know them. This is a lot like college admission committees and scholarship committees because a lot of information when students are applying, they just leave the basics. I'm a student, this is my GPA, here's my test scores. But a lot of these major decisions are based off of limited information and judgments can sometimes be incorrect. So when you're applying to these scholarships, when you're applying to colleges, make sure that you tell that college or scholarship exactly who you are and what makes you different from everybody else. This could be a make or break decision when schools or scholarships are looking at who will be the winner of the scholarship or who will be admitted to the university. So going deeper into looking at a personal statement and what a personal statement is and is not, you can see how a, pers a personal statement is a picture to provide a snapshot of who you are as a person and not an academic paper that you will distance the reader from you. You will see that a personal statement is an invitation to help the reader get to know you and not a journal entry that is not in a professional voice. And make sure that a personal statement is a story to show the reader your challenges or aspirations and not a plea or justification that defends why you are the best candidate. Just like the previous example, when creating personal statement, provide a picture of who you are as a person, what makes you unique, what qualities do you have, what are your goals in academia and your career, and how you, you became the person you are today and how that will shape your future. So let's look at our next activity, 20 in lesson 20. So here you can give yourself 45 seconds to write down five ideas for the following topics. Write down the first five ideas that come to mind and try to think outside of the box. So set a timer for your phone, press pause, and give yourself a list of five people, list of five places, list of five I believe statements, list of five someday statements, and list five personal strengths. Go. So reflecting on your brainstorm and who and what you listed as your five, what I want you to do is reflect on those and look at what sticks out to you the most in each heading. Were there any common threads that you see between one or more of the headings? How do some of these common threads relate to your future college experience? And how are your personal strengths related to these headings? Our third activity will be creating an email address. Now creating an email address, the key to a professional email address is keeping it simple. So you can see the examples for a professional email address format, John Doe at example.com, John.doe at example.com. You can see some of the unprofessional email address formats. girly 2 girl at example.com, too fierce to fail at example.com, and gamergirl2002 at example.com. Remember that when you are applying to any colleges or scholarships, even jobs, that they will be reviewing and looking at your email addresses. And most times they'll actually be contacting you via email 
So you're gonna to wanna to make sure that's something professional, something easy that they can respond to. So if you have not created an email address before, very simple, and you can still have your personal email and a professional email. You do not have to sacrifice one over the other. So for one, just log into the computer. Two, you can go to a website that creates emails for you. Um, for example, www.gmail.com is a popular one. Click on create account in the lower left-hand corner. When it asks you why you're creating this account, click for myself. You'll have to create a password with your first and last name. Enter a phone number. This really helps when you have forgotten a password and helps you recreate it. Enter the code sent to your phone. Make sure that you have access to the phone on file. And then sometimes it's optional to enter any additional information, but not necessary. Accept the privacy terms related to that email account. And congratulations. You have your own professional email that you can apply to colleges, scholarships, jobs, so on and so forth. It's important not to forget the password for this or even the username. So if you have to write it down somewhere safe, make sure that you write it down somewhere you can also remember where you're gonna get it and make sure that you check this regularly. So for next steps, our last topic today will be the FAFSA next steps, creating an FSA ID in order to prepare for the FAFSA. The FAFSA will open up October 1st of your senior year of high school, but as a junior, you can create your FSA ID. For your FSA ID, you'll need two things, your social security number and your full legal name. So if you do not already know the information, please find it out, write it down. Make sure that you enter this information incorrectly. Please enter your full legal name as it is posted on your social security card which will also have your social security number. This will be your login for the FAFSA when you start it senior year, but you can create it today. And make sure that this FSA ID, just like your email, password, and username, is kept somewhere safe where you can always access it because it is something that you will keep, continue to use in the future when you continue to fill out your FAFSA. So that concludes our presentation today. Please feel free to contact Access ASU with any questions or if you'd like to learn more information. And please connect with us on social media if you haven't yet. Have a great day and remember some of the lessons taught today. Thank you. Goodbye.